Murder Runs is coming to his season finale and it was truly a right to anticipate and try to find out what is going on in this universe and to see it play out throughout all of the episodes. But because Murder Runs is an indie animation show, it takes time until an episode is finished and between the off time you might forget some important details before we go into the finale. So here's everything you need to know before the season finale drops on the 21st of August. Hello my little dronies. Welcome back to another video. I plan to structure this video in three different parts. The first one will be a short recap of all the events that happened. Then I re-show all the hidden clues throughout the episodes, no matter if they already have a conclusion or not. And at last I show all the plot points that are still very likely to happen. And I have a special one no other murder on YouTuber has talked about. But at first, before I start the recap, I wanted to point out in my last video I analyzed the trailer of episode 8 and something I didn't include is if you play the audio in the end backwards it kind of sounds like everything ends but it is very unclear so I leave it up for you to decide how much you trust it. So I don't know if you hear the same thing I do, but I try to enhance it while editing, maybe you can hear it more clearly then. But anyways, the story of Maradons start out with Uzi leaving the bunker to find excess parts for her railgun, although being confronted by N and they break out in a fight, but Uzi manages to get the upper hand, but N manages to regenerate, but doesn't recognize Uzi as a worker drone, so they have a conversation. Later Uzi flees back to the bunker, but N manages to catch up and and disassemble all of the worker drones guarding the entrance. And after catching up, and later V and J catch up and, and N proposes that the workers are not so different from them which Jay backstabs N in the moment the little b and Uzi feels bad for N and saves his life together with them they team up to kill Jay and disarm V but after some time the dead body of Jay started to regenerate again but not as a disassembly drone but as an eldritch horror creature which caused trouble in the bunker although because Uzi banished herself she didn't notice it at first and together with they find out Jay turned into a monster and after Uzi gets trauma dumped after that they blow up Jay and that means she's finally gone for good now right Anyways, Doll starts murdering her classmates, so there's only one prom queen left, which is Wee, who befriended herself with Lissy, all in an elaborate house to destroy the colony. But after that, they team up and kill Doll. Just kidding, she faked her own death. After that, we get a post credit scene of Jay coming back, and oh my god, can no one in this universe ever stay dead for just a second? Not like that glitch. Next episode, Uzi goes with her class on a camping trip, but the disassemblies are there and the people that murdered the colony for a while now are more popular than Uzi, which gives Uzi a panic attack and basically gets rid of all the unimportant side characters nobody cared about anyways. One silent moment for Rebecca, please. Next episode is basically a backflash, but not really. But to conclude this episode, we are introduced to Sin and the episode is just Sin doing Sin stuff. And in the end, we are showing a pointless cliffhanger with Doll meeting up with Tessa and later also Uzi N and V to go down in the laboratory where they can cure Uzi Solva. Only problem is though the security system are a bunch of dinosaurs that can stun drones. And because no one even attempts to shoot one of the sentinels, we lose one of the best characters in the entire show. And in the last episode, Uzi and N get split up and while they are trying to reconnect to one another, they each get lore dumped and Uzi can handle all of this and gets another panic attack. After that, Tessa tries to betray Uzi, but a little romance between Uzi and N went over her head. And after that, we have an epic fighting montage and Uzi killing her mother because we can't introduce new characters. But hey, plot twist, Tessa was Sim the whole time and she overwhelms the two of them and we get a setup for probably a fight between Jay and the Zero screen time squad, which feels like, which feels like the setup in episode 5, so we might see what happens there. Oh, and also Uzi's in space. What, what the f***? 
But now that we are done with the remake, I can start pointing out every single detail you should have in mind. And let's start with the most obvious one. Glitch did a post talking about background secrets. And the first image was of course when Uzi was revealed to have the absolute solver when she blocked one of the bullets from hitting her in the face. And this was the first sign of the solver we have ever seen. And throughout all of the episodes we saw it evolve into like the main plot basically. With it being seemingly resolved at the end of the last episode when Uzi got the patch. Oh wait a second. She didn't get the patch, which means the first thing we have to remember is Uzi still could technically be taken over by Sin. She only suppressed her but never defeated her, which means Sin has still a backup plan. But speaking about backup plans, another thing is to remember that all drones were not solver capabilities, or I propose even every single drone has the capability to regenerate or revive itself as long as the core is still intact, as much we saw with Nori and Jay when she turned into an Eldritch monster. But most of the time if we actually see a heart getting destroyed on screen it's a pretty much confirmation that the character is and will be dead forever like we saw with doll so and i know it's outdated meanwhile but we never saw we actually getting her heart destroyed and even though if we don't see her in the final episode i think at least as a headcanon we can think that she survives but just didn't manage to get back into the fight and lives on in the bunker personally i liked it more and more than her actually dying to the sentinels but the thing i want you to remember is that back when Jay was killed she still was able to come back even though her core was destroyed which begs the theory how do you actually finish off a disassembly drone or something similar which means we easily could have a scene of one of the characters that are right now dead coming back or one of the main characters dying but being revived in order to have a happy ending which i doubt we're going to have one but anyways another thing i want you to remember is a detail hidden throughout almost every single episode and it's the solver and his interaction with mirrors to be honest this is greatly inspired by a theory of a friend of mine but i included this point in the video no matter what he just gave me mere things to talk about because every time the solver looks in the mirror that mirror shatters and that happened at least in every single episode once except the pilot but my personal theory is that the absolute solver comes from a, some form of mirror dimension because in episode 5 we can see a tentacle claw growing out of one of the drone's bodies going into a mirror coming out of another mirror holding the cam Uzi is later controlling and we see lots more of images of the solver if it breaks a mirror that set mirror also starts to bleed like the solver program tried to escape through it so the thing I want you to remember is that the solver always has a relationship to mirrors or reflections and because we barely know anything about the solver itself it could be a part of the way we defeat it in the end and also so for example when Uzi traveled back to the past before she took a physical form she only could communicate through reflections and not directly with her and, and again thanks pro make good videos and you probably should check them out if you feel like it but remember about seven minutes ago I promised something special and I'm going to show it now but I'm going to censor a lot of it because I don't want me or any of the people that are involved getting in trouble if this is an actual leak because remember Discord messages can easily be faked, but I just included because I saw it and it might be worth pointing out. But I saw a community post of another YouTuber whose friend was talking in the murder on Discord, I assume. And that friend asked one of the glitch employees if Uzi and N will kiss in the last episode. And the employee answered, I'm not telling, just wait until the episode comes out, which wouldn't be as important because it doesn't really confirm. Of course, it does hint a little bit at it, but nothing to jump to conclusions. But where this one gets spicy, the community post says that this message was later deleted, which makes me curious. Why would you delete a message if there's seemingly nothing wrong with it? Because like, if it's not true and it just was a bit playing around by the employee, there would be no reason to delete the message because the only reason why you would delete the message is because Uzi and N are going to kiss and this might hint too much at that and the deleting of the message makes it hint even more in that direction but although to the entire Uzi and N kissing I want to say my opinion personally I want to have a relationship between them and good or end dramatically but even though I said it multiple times myself I don't know if a kiss will be the right thing because I mean have you seen the Murderons models? I don't even know how this would look and like the one scene where Uzi was tempted by eating the oil was already extremely uncomfortable for those few seconds so I don't know how a kiss scene would look so I'm very speculative at that and again this easily could be faked or misinterpreted by me but it is still a thing to note before you go into the last episode. But the next thing to remember is that 
Throughout the last few episodes, I would call it the final arc of Manorons, we repeatedly have seen the imagery of sacrifice. At first, before the final arc started, we had V kinda sacrificing herself by not trying to kill Anne in the flashback, but that was a slight hint. Up next, we had the true sacrifice of V in the end of episode 6, and after that, we had the sacrifice of Uzi trying to rescue Anne. The only one who is left out now would be Anne to sacrifice himself. In older, I proposed the theory that, that someone will sacrifice himself and die but reincarnate is one of the solver hearts many people propose that n is finally going to die because he's the fan favorite character and ditch repeatedly tells us that the finale will be emotional and there also exists this meme which isn't really to be taken serious but glitch has already hinted with the smaller things big plot twist so i don't know and on the topic of N, another thing to remember is that he is a pilot and in the trailer we could actually see a spaceship flying around. So maybe we could see N as a pilot actually, or it might be V, but she lost the keys to it. So I could very much see Glitch doing a joke like that N had the keys all the time in one of his pockets. Another thing that you should really remember is that Jay probably is going to have her character arc in the last episode because it's no big surprise that Jay is one of the main characters characters but actually has no screen time at all like i think she doesn't even have 10 minutes of screen time and even though i already believe jay's character can't be saved anymore especially in this last few episodes because she's extremely mean all the time and unsympathetic but hey there are some jay fans out there maybe for them she still can be saved and the last thing you should believe is that in animation there are no coincidences so to this statement i have heard it a lot of times and even though it's true but i don't really believe in it because of course course you have to purposefully animate everything you animate but you can still misinterpret some things like there's one scene where Tessa is forming the solver symbol with her hand and many people think that she was actually about to summon the solver which I personally think I would love that theory but it's more like I just uh, like to try ho hold the sword from her face away because that worked so good the second time. But what with the statement is meant that I continuously could point out even more secrets that could be important. Most of the secrets were later important, like it started with the beginning, that Uzi had the server on her face and later it became the main plot. Or that Jay died and turned into an Eldritch monster was important one episode later. But we couldn't possibly know that because we weren't made aware of the situation. Right now we know pretty much everything about Melodons except for what the absolute server is and what it can do. So you should remember that everything about it could be surprising. Like it could be a monster from a parallel mirror dimension or something. This is again based on the mirror theory I mentioned earlier. But the thing is we don't know until we see the final episode which things we saw were hints to the future. So the final the thing I want you to remember is that every single thing you could see right now could be something that is hinting to the finale. We just don't know it yet until the finale has actually happened. Like for example, I could also point out the phone caller could be something that Jay still isn't administrated by Uzi because NNV's administration rights got later changed. And I still could point out that Khan is all of a sudden super confident without any reason. So maybe he was hiding something all the time. Or this, this corpse in the cabin labs could actually be Yiva or Nori. All of those I could actually point out. But the thing is, it wouldn't matter if I point them out and nothing has happened, but it would matter if I point them out and something happens with them. So important is it to always keep an eye open and be aware that theoretically everything could be a hint. There's something else, we just don't know it yet, maybe. But this concludes my final Murderons video. That probably won't be the final. My cat just kicked a water bottle. But anyways, I will focus after this on making Murderverse and cover other in the animation shows type down in the comments which one you feel like you want to see and of course i will make a final review on murder drones where i can complain about things that i liked and i didn't like and stuff like that and i will make a bunch of videos on fan series but for now on we will see us after the finale yeah!